Good day fellow students, now we will be discussing about the sculptures and architecture during the prehistoric, ancient Egypt, and classical Greek period. To give us more information, here is Via. Via, take it away! First of all, we must know what a sculpture and what architecture is. Sculpture is the art of making two or three dimensional representative or abstract forms, especially by carving stone or wood or by casting metal or plaster. Meanwhile, architecture is the art or practice of designing and constructing buildings. Ed, do you have anything to say? Yes, Via. Now, let us move on to the sculptures during the prehistoric era. And before digging some information, here are some pictures of sculptures during the prehistoric era. Let us know what sculptures from the prehistoric era are like. Materials used in sculptures vary according to region and locality. Archaeologists believe that their sculpture is a result of natural erosion and not of human artistry. Frequently, carving may have mythological or religious significance. This is the Venus of Virgo. Its estimate date is 28,000 BCE to 25,000 BCE. It is carved from limestone, with excessively heavy breasts and abdomen, used as charm to ensure fertility. Another example of it is the Venus of Brass and Pool. It's about 25,000 years old. It is a sculpture of a lady with a hood. It is a fragmentary ivory figurine from Upper Paleotic Era and represents the hairstyle and human face. Now, let us take a look at the sculptures from the ancient Egypt era. Symbolic elements such as form, hieroglyphics, relative size, location, material, color, actions, and gestures were widely used. Their tombs required the most extensive use of sculpture. The most common materials used for sculptures are wood, ivory, and stones. Here are the characteristics of the sculptures during the ancient Egypt era. Number one is symbolism, were heavily used to represent the gods. They were presented as a composite creature with animal heads on human bodies. Number two, relief compositions were arranged in horizontal lines to record an event or to represent an action. Number three, most of the time, the gods were shown larger than the humans, the kings larger than their followers, and the dead larger than the living. Number 4. Empty spaces were filled with figures or hieroglyphs. All individual components were brought to the plane of representation and laid out like writing. The picture shows Queen Nefertiti, a painted limestone. It is dated at the 18th dynasty between 1375 and 1357 BC. It is realistic with heavy eyelids, slender neck, determined chin, and pure profile under her heavy crown. Queen refers to the great royal wife of the Egyptian pharaoh. The picture shows the pharaoh Menkare and his queen, Stone, dated between 4th dynasty, 2548 to 2530 BC. An example of portraits presented in rigid postures and were simple and powerful with very little show of private emotion. Now, let us move on to the sculptures during the classic Greece period. Elise? Yes, and early Greek sculptures were stands, stiff, their bodies were hidden within and folding robes. After three centuries of experiment, Greek sculptures had finally evolved and showed all the points of human anatomy and proportion. One of the most popular styles of Greek sculptures was the Hellenistic style. Hellenistic denotes a preference in sculpture for more elaborated patterns, mannered arrangement of figures and groups, and an emphasis on the representation of movement for more dramatic effects. The picture shows Myron. The Discovery, 450 BC, image from Treasures of the World, 1961, CCP Library. 
it shows an attitude of maximum tension, full compressed energy and about to explode action. Great! Have you learned new things? Now, we will move on to our next topic. Can you guess what it is? Yes, that is correct. All about architecture. Tyra? Megaliths are common during prehistoric era. Megaliths means a big rock coming from the Greek word lithos. Lithos meaning stone and megas meaning big. These structures were intended for burial. During this era, stones and rock were associated with divinity. The three main types of megalith stones are menhir, dolmens, and groble. Menhir is a huge stone standing vertically on the ground, usually standing in the middle of the field or arranged in rows. The second main type is the dolmen. It originated from the expression dolmen, which means a stone table. It served as a grave or altar. Crop is the third main type of megalith stone. Crop is the Britonic word means bent or curved and lex means slab or flat stone. Literally, it's a circle of standing stone. This is the Stonehenge. It is the most preserved megalithic site in Europe. Thank you, Samuel. Now let us move on to the Egyptian architecture. It was known to be developed during the pre-dynastic period, or 4000 BC. Hans, will you tell us more about its characteristics? Yes, Philip. First, the structure has thick sloping walls with few openings to obtain stability. Second, the exterior and interior walls, along with columns and piers, were covered with hieroglyphics and pictorial frescoes and carvings painted with brilliant colors. Number three, ornamentations were symbolic including scarab, solar disc, vulture, and common motifs. Lastly, number four, temples were aligned with astronomically significant events like solstices and equinox with precise measurements required on determining the moment of the particular event. The pyramids of Giza are funerary structures of the three kings of the fourth dynasty, namely Khufu, Kafa, and Menkara. The pyramids were built highly confusing and with many tunnels to create confusion to grave robbers. Temples were built to serve as place of residence for the gods. They also serve as key centers for economic activity. The other kind is the mastaba, an Egyptian tomb in the form of a flat roof, rectangular structure with outward sloping tiles. It is made from mud bricks or stones. Now for our last topic, let's have Sam to explain about the Greek architecture. Sam? Temples from the Greek era consisted of central shrine or room in an aisle surrounded by rows of columns. These buildings were designed in one of the three architectural styles of order, Doric, Ionic, or Corinthian. The Parthenon from 447 to 432 BC in Athens is the greatest classical temple. You can see it in the picture. And that's all. I hope you enjoy and learn something new. And again, we are the Group 3 from 91STE, Olongapo City National High School. This video is created and edited by Stephen Santolan. And again, thank you for watching.